For more information on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com. Subscribe to Channel Television's live stream on YouTube and other social media platforms using your mobile device browser, or download the Channel TV app for Android and iOS devices from their respective stores. Besides giving you access to news updates on the go, the Channel TV and Channel 24 app have an eyewitness feature that you can use to share pictures, videos, and news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. So we have some of the images that you sent in. Let's begin with this video from Abel Kuta, the Ongo State Capital, showing the dilapidated bridge along Adigbe or Badaoko Road. According to eyewitness, uh, eyewitness, the bridge caved in after a flash flood, which resulted uh, from a rainfall. He's asking for a quick fix to the road before it becomes a death trap. Next is this image from Lambe Kudaisi Street at Akonjo Igbeda area of Lagos State showing this road, which eyewitness says now wears a better look than what it used to be. Our eyewitness applauds the intervention of the state government and asks that they should address the issue of flood, which has been giving residents sleepless nights. Final image tonight is from Komkom Railway along Afam Road, Oyibu, local government area of a river state. It's showing heavy smoke, which according to eyewitness results from a fire outbreak this morning. The reports of the cause of the fire, as well as the extent of damage, is yet unknown. Thanks for sending in those uh, pictures and please keep them coming. The Nigerian police says it has not entered into any partnership with any private company for the purpose of unveiling a website dedicated to acquiring a police background check number, that's a PBCN. In a statement by Force PRO, Frank Mba, the police authorities asked Nigerians to disregard reports credited to a company called Ace of Spades about plans to unveil a dedicated website for that purpose. The statement reads in part, members of the public, including corporate entities, are advised not to allow themselves to be wheeled into parting with their hard-earned resources under the pretext of acquiring a police background check number through Ace of Spades Consult. The false PRO, however, advises the Nigeria police under its current leadership will continue to work with private entities <clears throat> excuse me, in evolving technologically driven solutions for addressing security challenges within the country. Today is International Widows Day and attention is being focused on the rights of widows highlighting the issues they face and developing policies to address them. At the Yaba College of Technology Multipurpose Hall, the Rose of Sharon Foundation celebrated this group emphasizing this year's theme, which is upholding the human rights of widows, the law and cultural practices. These widows from different parts of Nigeria gather at the multipurpose hall of the Yaba College of Technology, Lagos, to mark the International Widows Day. While majority are here with their full attention, some of these women seem lost in their thoughts gazing blankly into space. But a message from the founder of Rose of Sharon Foundation, Mrs. Florensho Alakija, seems to lift their spirit. It is imperative that we all work together to stamp out discrimination and ill treatment of widows, their children and orphans once and for all. A roundtable discussion on this year's theme, upholding the human rights of widows, the law and cultural practices, emphasizes more on widows speaking up. We should start now by telling ourselves and refusing these traditions and saying no to them. Because if they cannot use us, we will not wear, uh, 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 the, the rights of these women will be upheld, upheld. So we should start thinking about our fellow women. We want these things to be effective. We don't want to just talk and it ends here. We want these things to be implemented. Human rights lawyers, human activists, you know, all of them must be involved in ensuring that knowledge, knowledge is key, that these women who are already widows are empowered and that nobody has any right to maltreat them from now onwards because there are laws protecting them in the land. A veteran singer, Onyeka Onweno, takes the stage and the women respond positively. 
The singer then speaks as the daughter of a widow. Self-worth, a sense of who you are. Not a matter of being rich, not a matter of being famous. Just deep inside you know you are created for a reason. That that job you are doing because you are mother and father at the same time. The United Nations country representative to Nigeria Comfort Lamte encourages women to support each other. The associations and networks of widows uh, have to be strong so that you can give the support to other women when there are situations where they need that support, where their rights are being violated. For some of these widows, the memories are painful, but they've found a reason to smile again. It has been awesome. They have never, never failed in paying the children's school fees. Every, every time, we are, at least you are sure of something coming out, which you can never, never get from a relation or in-law. The International Widows' Day is observed annually on June the 23rd by the United Nations to draw attention to the voices and experiences of widows following the death of their spouses and to galvanize the unique support that they need. The United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights has, moved, has uh, called for an end to sexual and gender-based violence against vulnerable IDPs in Benway State by training civil society organizations and security personnel in responding to incidents. This is a follow-up from an interagency strategy review meeting in April following reported cases of gender-based violence at IDP camps and a channel television's investigation into the allegations. In April 2019, when Channels Television investigated cases of alleged rape of IDPs in Benue State, Wesley was one of the first victims to open up on the scourge of sexual and gender-based violence perpetrated against her by a security personnel at an IDP camp. We have that. The news further led to interventions by agencies like civil society groups and the UN systems into this training workshop in Makodi, the Benue state capital. First, the state head of service, Veronica Onyeke, who represents the Benue state governor, makes a case for solutions to all the challenges of displacement. Many homes have been broken, and the girl child education is seriously threatened in areas that witness the crisis. With this scenario, let me stress that we are expecting much from the resource persons at this workshop. Among others, they should critically address all the angles to the humanitarian issues. In particular, they should help in offering workable solutions that will go a long way in restoring the dignity and hope to our traumatized women. The representative of UNFPA takes on the challenges of vulnerability of IDPs, while the lead presentation from the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights provides legal instruments that can help protect vulnerable people. Instead of just going to the camps to sensitize, we must intensify the mentoring of the young girls because they have the capacity to resist you know, the pressures that come to them. So we, so far, in the past two, three months, we've been able to reach out to close to 500 uh, young girls and women. The act prohibits all forms of violence against persons in private and public life. It came into existence to address the gaps that existed in the protections and remedies available to women who have suffered various harms as a result of violence meted out to them on account of their gender. As participants leave after the training with new skills to track sexual and gender-based violence against IDPs, the helpline intervention established among the CSOS here should facilitate a reporting mechanism and the prosecution of offenders going forward. The world recently celebrated the International Day of the African Child this year. The theme was prioritizing children's rights. Priorities such as health, clean water, nutrition, protection, adequate standard of living, and education. So how much progress is Africa and Nigeria making in education? We have uh, Channel Television's data analyst, Babajido Gusogo, here to tell us about it. And you have your crystal ball again.
We have to keep making forecasts about the future. That's all what Nigerians are really concerned about. Mm -hmm. But you know, on education, listen carefully to this um, from Albert Einstein. He says that education is not about learning of facts. Education is about freeing up the mind to think. Mm -hmm. And so the evidence we have today is that there are 10 million Nigerians between the age of 6 and 14 who should be in school or they're out of school. In other words, if Albert Einstein were here and he were to describe this, he would say there are 10 million Nigerians who are still yet to be able to think. If it were Winston Churchill, he would say there are 10 million light bulbs that Nigeria has refused to switch on. And if it were Martin Luther King Jr., here's what he will say. He will say there are 10 million slaves in Nigeria. So the right question tonight is, how do we end slave trade? What I mean is, how do we ensure that we reduce the number of out-of-school children? And if there's only one solution we can recommend tonight, it will be for us to pay, and pay more attention to what the parents are bothered about, and that is the returns on education. Mm. And by returns on education, I mean, does education pay the parents? Yes, I know that the education pays, but here's why several parents are bothered. They point out to the evidence that shows that for every 10 Nigerians in the labor force, four mm. are either underemployed or unemployed. What happens to the remaining six? The six are either self-employed and with low income. So in other words, the government needs to ensure that the returns on education to the parents pays. They need to have a, a strong belief that sending children to schools will provide good returns to them as parents and to the children in future. And, and that's for formal education you're talking about. But does the government have this, the, the data uh, to make better education-related plans and investments so that parents can plan properly? Yes, the evidence shows that the government has the data. What they need to do more is to analyze that data properly. For instance, let's look at the seven facts about out-of-school children that we have today. Fact one shows that every year, five million new babies are born. I'm actually, in other words, by the time I'm done with this statement I'm about to make, 3,000 babies would have been born. Simple, in, in other words, 3,000 babies are born every minute in Nigeria. Mm. That is the first challenge. The second fact is, yes, we know that 10 million children who are out of school between the age of 6 and 14, the challenge is most of these children are girls. Mm. The third fact is, to show you how significant the challenge is, the number of out-of-school children is greater than the population of the United Arab Emirates. The fourth fact is, what are the real causes of out-of-school children? And yes, though we know there are several causes, there are three that stand out majorly. Poverty, child labor, and religion. And by religion, the evidence shows that 8 out of 10 children who are out of school are in northern Nigeria. The fifth fact shows, yes, <clears throat> half of this out-of-school children are in seven states, and yes, we know that 70% are below the age of 11 years old. So finally, what is the solution? The solution is for governments to improve on policy, to improve on funding, <clears throat> to make the schools more accessible, but to also ensure that the private sector is also involved and we also provide incentives. Yes, we've seen incentives to the children through the homegrown school feeding program, but we need to provide more incentives to parents as well. Well, Vajide, we have been educated tonight, and the light bulbs are on. Oh, yes, the light bulbs <laughs> are on. But you know, something happened that the United States did half a century ago, which we can learn from. And what, that was the introduction of Sesame Street that you and I remember. Yeah. 1969, Sesame Street was introduced, and that made learning fun to a lot of children. So even if we don't remember all of these statistics, what the government needs to do as well is to borrow a cue from what happened in 1969, we need to make sure that learning is fun again. Let's put the fun back into, into learning. And that is the forecast. If we're able to do those things, get the states and local governments and into education, all then of the that future, in your crystal ball the future clearly so looks much better. Thank you so much, Ogusawa. A pleasure, the pleasure is always mine. You.